Comes in attendees. All right, so it's practice. Oh, I get more on that? Yeah. More, promote the panelists. Okay. I'm going to yeah. leave the meeting. He left. Oh, he left. I mean, he's in the panelists now. Oh, he is? Huh. Well, he should. Did you promote him to panelists? Well, I went to do it, and then and then he left. So I don't know. Oh, all right. Was. Well, if he comes back, I guess I'm not the uh, host anymore. You made him the host. You didn't make him a co-host. Oh, you wait a second. Oh, there's CJ. I'll let you back on. Oh, yeah, you're the host. Okay, so you're the host. I'm leaving. You got to take care of everybody. I can't do anything. I'm just a regular Joe. <laughs> he would have to make you a co-host. Yeah. Oh, wow, you have 11 attendees. You got a lot of people there. We got Dexter. Yeah, you could let him. He's going to be speaking. You could let him over if you wanted. Yeah. Hey, Brian. Why is Liz right in the attendees now? Hello, everybody. Uh -huh. I don't know. Hey, folks. Lovely to be here tonight. Hey, Mike. Hey, Dexter. Hello there. All right, Frank. If you want to make any co-hosts, you do it. In the panelist area, you go to uh, war or whatever. And you go to participants. Stop it. <laughs> participants in the panelist area you go to what panelists and that's how you would make a co-host oh i see make a host make a co-host all right you know well you're the host don't make a host or you'll do, you'll be useless right. make okay. co-host you got it all right all right if you want okay and then you are screen sharing i guess well, I just thought I'd put the agenda up there. Just uh, can everybody see that? Yep. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm leaving. Bye, Brian. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. Vicky. Bye, CJ. Uh, Have a good uh, evening. Have a nice dinner. Good night. <laughs> yeah, I'm going right back to dinner. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Uh, I think we can get, go ahead and get started. We've certainly got a uh, quorum. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got uh, I can get this out of my way. Sorry, guys. I'm kind of so we got uh, Brian's here, Frank, Mike, CJ, Liz, Vicky. All That's present. a full house, man. And Dexter backing us all up. So um, we'll uh, approve the agenda as as. Uh, Frank, you have presented. to let Liz in. What's that? Liz is in the uh, attendees. She needs to come in. To... All right. Got it. Okay. All right. I don't know why she flipped out of there and then went back in. Okay, good. Okay, uh, so uh, for, as far as approving the agenda, um, I uh, I say we approve the agenda. Anybody? Do we have to do a, we have to do a vote on that, right? Yeah, I'll second. All right. Yeah. You, you second. Did. I just have a I just have a quick question. Uh, motion one is kind of a discussion item. It's not really a motion. Motion two is not really a motion. Motion three and four are motions. So, am am I the only one thinking this way? I mean, it's not motion one isn't written as a motion. The motion um, is to discuss. Did you see? Did you see the attachment? Yes. No, Frank. This is Mike. There was no 
attachment. I did not see it. Look at it. Um, look on the um, Venice Neighborhood Council website. Under it's right next to the agenda. I had to find it too, Mike. It's it's there. It's sort of weirdly um, described. Yeah, it's put. It's called a. I think it's just called an attachment. I don't want to change anything on my screen, or I'll mess everything up. So. All right. Well, I'll let well, you let's just go, let's just go through it when it gets there. But. Well, so if, if may you... I may I inquire as sort of the new guy on the block here? I heard what Brian said about motions one and two, and they're really not motions. They're more That's like what I mean. discussions. My question right. to the committee is: Is the homeless committee uh, supposed to? discuss things or only go through motion items because these, totally, these are not motions but i'm ready to discuss it yeah i think that's what we would do we would discuss but the, as i mentioned they aren't motions the way they're written agreed Mo motion motion three from eva is and the one you and frank did is a motion right but the other two are just basic discussion items okay i agree in my in my opinion right I agree with you, Rick, Vicky. Whatever that's worth. Yeah, thanks, Mike. That's uh, <laughs> it's it's great. All right, um, we got a hand up here from. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, do we want to do we? We should. Uh, let uh, let them speak to it. Let's see what S Sam this has is, to say. I've only got one hand, so let's uh, let's let him. Uh, Sam. That hand's been up all along, for a long time. Right. We don't need public comment on this. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll. Uh, We'll uh, avoid public comment and then let's uh, let's um, we'll take the comment when we pull up the uh, when we pull up the agenda item for discussion. So we have a motion to approve the agenda and CJ seconded it. Right. Yes. So the vote would be uh, anybody object? No. I, I do okay. not object. This is Mike. All right, approve the minutes of the last meeting as presented. Are we okay on that? I never received them. Where See, are they're they? on the uh, website there, CJ. The um, uh, right, right, right next to the agenda for the last meeting. The minutes are in there. When did they get put up there? Uh, a couple of days ago. Oh well. Wow. You should just actually email those to us or something. I could do that. I apologize. I mean, if you want us to read it. I, I can't vote on it until I read it. So I'm going to abstain or if nobody else has read it, we need to wait. Uh, Anybody uh, else? I'm with, I'm with CJ on this. I, I am too. Did not read it. Do you want okay. to? I, I move to postpone. I move we postpone it until the next meeting. All right. And let's make sure we get them all set separately. All right. So I can I, I agree with that. So uh, if anybody objects to moving to postpone it till next meeting, <clears throat> no anybody? objections. Okay. We good with that? Yep. yep. Yes. Announcements. Anybody with any announcements? Frank, is this me? This is Dexter. Is this me? Uh, no, you're I on don't... that. Uh, you're coming. You're coming up. I. I should. Uh, I should. Uh, mention that. Um, 
Dexter will give a report after the public comment. Okay. That's okay That's with everybody. Okay, oh, thanks, Frank. Okay, great, great sorry to, about great that, to have Dexter. Him. Great, great to have him back. Yeah. All right, public comment. Um, I've got Nicole in here. I got Zach. Helen, Peter, Sam. All right, let's get started. Hello? Nicole? Yes. Yep. Hi, I'm just, uh, great. I'm just opposing uh, motion three. Okay, we'll be hearing that in a few, in a few minutes. Uh, well, hopefully in a few minutes. Um, um, you'll probably want to comment on that when we're when we're uh, hearing that motion. Okay, great, thank you. You bet, Zach. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, can. Okay, um, I just wanted to say that the Venice Neighborhood Council is notorious for their vicious and sadistic behavior towards unhoused Angelinos. Tonight's agenda is further evidence that that reputation has been earned through a relentless pursuit of torturing our, un our neighbors without housing. It's sickening that you would include a proposal for a soup kitchen event sandwiched between two violent motions to displace and terrorize the most vulnerable members of our society. As if a photo op to plaster pictures on your NC website of your faux benevolence cancels out your calls for vicious, vicious crackdowns on those on the street. The members of this committee should be ashamed at their own heartlessness and embarrassed that rather than use this committee to help the unhoused, you wield it as a cudgel to punish those you should be helping. Shameful. I yield my time. Thank you, Zach. Mr. Hall. Helen? Um, yes, hi. I just wanted to uh, let you or call your attention, and hopefully all of you are aware of it, of the tragedy of the gentleman who was assaulted by somebody who tried to steal his bike and the man was hit his head on the curb and did die. And that's an issue I think we've got to tackle is these uh, homeless encampments filled with stolen bikes because they're getting even more aggressive. You know, the break-ins for the bikes, the blatantly cruising through with the bikes in their hands, and now just basically trying to steal bikes directly out, away from people. It's just awful. And I think this committee needs to take a position on that. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. Peter? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, well, I, you know, I'd really like to echo what um, Zach said earlier about the reputation uh, that this that this particular neighborhood council has um, and the work that you guys have, have done to, to get that. Um, I mean, today you've put together a comprehensive poo-poo platter of uh, cruelty, hatred for the poor and classism, um, a, a, an absolutely remarkable collection of the worst, most terrible reactionary policies um, that people try to put in place to attack uh, and dehumanize our unhoused neighbors. Um, I'd say, you know, a, this is especially disappointing, you know, considering that last night we saw some amazing progress across the city, um, you know, people across a city and the county voted for better, kinder, fairer, more equitable Los Angeles. Um, and that's gonna happen. Um, and, and you guys can put forward this stuff, but- Thanks gonna, Peter, that's a minute. Um, thanks. Um, Sam? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, echo what has been the sentiment largely so far. Um, that there's a lot that this neighborhood council should be ashamed of and that motion three is just in the, another addition in the long list of things. Um, bikes were brought up as well. I've noticed, uh, you know, like when, <laughs> when, when people see a bike that they think might be theirs or looks like theirs, oftentimes the more aggressive one is the, uh, the QZ, the, the housed, often housed neighbor who's accusing someone baselessly uh, of a crime they probably didn't commit. I've seen people chase people down on busy uh, traffic, like go through three lanes of traffic on Venice Boulevard right by Link Lincoln or 
Um, yeah, link in there. Uh, just because they thought a bike looked like theirs. Like that's a public safety hazard. The public safety hazard is largely these uh, house neighbors and vigilante folks who are going about uh, terrorizing all the rest of us. Um, you know, most of the victims of uh, act of aggression committed Sam, by unhoused Sam. people are other unhoused people. Sam, your minutes Y'all are in danger. Okay, thank you, Sam. Um, I already had Zach, didn't we? Yeah. <clears throat> Lisa? Yeah, um, I just see you were just even now confused whether you'd had Zach or not. Uh, last month, you totally skipped me on a motion or on an agenda item that I wanted to speak on and just assumed I had spoken and I hadn't. So please, please, please this evening, be very conscientious on whether people have spoken or not. Maybe keep a side note. That's, it just, it's right that you do that. Also, if you're going to include um, attachments as part of the agenda, it needs to be on the agenda. Um, not just on a separate part on the website. Also, uh, the attachment that is on the website is for the second item, not for the first item. So, if there is an item attached, that can't be discussed. Um, so, and also you should include uh, Dexter on the agenda too, if he's supposed to speak. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Um, um, you have Eden next. P uh, Peter? No, Eden. Eden Miller. Shit. I'm out of sync now. Hmm. Eden. Oh, hello. Yes. Hi. Um, I would just like to echo what other Angelinos have said earlier, which is to reject this motion. Uh, you should be doing everything within your power as an elected official or like a council member to benefit everybody in we this community. We don't have a motion up. Or, well, it's public comment. I'm making a public comment. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, on your agenda that I can see in front of me. Okay. Um, so yeah, we should be doing everything that we can to help the unhoused population. These sweeps are unethical. They're wrong. You're treating human beings like garbage that needs to be picked up on the side of the road. That sounds harsh, but that's exactly what you're doing. It's unethical. It's unacceptable. And you need to do everything within your power as elected officials to not do that to people. Otherwise, what do we need you for? You're not governing anybody. You're not doing what needs to be done for the neighborhood. You're not benefiting people's lives. So yeah, do the right thing. I yield my time. Thanks. Writing. Hi, I just wanted to say that Frank, you're allowing a lot of people to talk about motion three already and that doesn't make sense. So do they not then talk about it later? I'm a little bit confused. But with regards to people saying it's the housed that are vicious and horrible. No, a lot of the people in that are housed realize from the stats that 50% of the crimes are mostly from the homeless. And a, a, they don't realize also that there's a lot of break-ins and they are from the homeless. And there has to be a balance between not only helping the homeless, but creating safety for neighborhoods as well, safety for everybody. There's an imbalance in, in Los Angeles, in, in, in Venice in particular. And I feel that we're be, being taken advantage of. If, the, if people that are here on this, uh, 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 here right now, they should look at looking into Pacific Palisades where the homeless are not so clustered only in one area. 
They should look at all areas of Los Angeles. Why only Venice? And Venice is pretty small. That's and Venice has really had a lot of problems with not just the homeless people, but a lot of rise in crime that stems from it. Thank you. A minute. We're at a minute. We have to walk because otherwise we'll be here for hours. I'll keep a minute the time if you want, Frank. But we have to just cut. I appreciate them off. that. Okay, we need to cut them off in a minute, and I can't do that. Um, Rachel. Hi, yes, I'm just calling to express concern and op opposition again about motion three, but um, overall our treatment of the homeless in the neighborhood of Venice. Um, these sweeps especially are just brutal and inhumane. There's no reason that this should even be an option in terms of creating safety in our community. All it does is- People who are talking on a motion. They can wait till three. She can talk generally. But she was talking about version three. She talked generally after that. Who's next? Um, that was, uh, um, that was Lydia. Where the hell did she go? Damn it. She's down at the bottom now. Yeah. Hi, sorry, I think I hit the wrong button. Um, my name is Lydia. Just wanna say first of all to uh, the white woman that was just yelling and cut the person off that I think that actually violates like some laws. You have to let people have their public comment and that person absolutely was not speaking on a motion. Um, and I'm gonna wait around to speak on motion three, but I do wanna say, I think it's really generous for people to call you all elected officials, especially when, whenever people are actually elected by the public, like Matt Fisher, you kick them off using like the most arcane and absurd rules. Um, so I hope you see that like any legitimacy you have is fading. And if you want at all to have any power in Venice, when the next neighborhood council elections come around. I know that you guys, it's not all elections, you guys just pick your buddies to be on the council too, but um, you should actually listen to what people have to say and not just like the six angry house people that call in every time. Um, so yeah, thanks. Rihanna. Um, yes, hello. Um, yes, as Lydia said, it is a Brown Act violation to interrupt people's public comments. So even if you see them off topic, you do not need to be interrupting people at all. It's highly inappropriate. Um, and speaking generally, um, the treatment by NIMBYs like you assholes in Venice is disgusting. Um, I personally know people, um, unhoused residents who have been firebombed, who knows if it was by somebody who's on this neighborhood council, like the way you guys speak about human beings is disgusting. And I really wouldn't be surprised. So you guys need to do a lot better than you are doing and stop being such hateful assholes. You need to actually help people go out there and give people food and water, give them tents, use your neighborhood council funds to, to get meals for people. You can be doing so much more than just sitting around and saying like, oh, we just need more sanitation sweeps. That'll fix everything. Throwing away people's property does not get them any closer to housing. We need you guys to be advocating for services and permanent housing, um, not more bullshit and sweet things like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Times. Thank you. Mark. Mark, Mark Gallant, Gallanty. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. I just wanna uh, let the committee know there, there's this concerted effort. We're, we're seeing it right here now where it is to embarrass, insult, put, make people afraid to speak. Uh, 
um, and I'm seeing it tonight. I, I cannot believe what I'm hearing from these uh, people speaking here on uh, open forum item. And I know a lot of my neighbors are afraid to come out and speak. Uh, they're just scared. And so I just want to let each of you know, Frank, Vicki, CJ, Brian, Mike, Liz, how much I appreciate your being here. I know you're all volunteers and you're trying to balance safety and public stuff with, uh, you know, un unhomed issues. And I appreciate that. And I, I don't appreciate people trying to intimidate, scare, and, and force to people to be quiet and, and reserved. So thank you all for your time serving on this committee. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Mike, Mike Bravo. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Hey, Frank, how's it going? Good, um, good. Good, good, all right. I just wanna offer a, a constructive comment about this committee and uh, I guess VNC procedure and makeup in general. You know, there's uh, no organic Venetians, no POC, no one house people on uh, this committee as well as uh, the VNC board in general and other committees. And yet there's decisions being made. And so uh, that's called top down hierarchical decision making. And that's not conducive for democracy. And despite the intentions of everybody on this committee and other committees on the board, the impact is that it reinforces racial, economic, and housing inequity. So this lack of inclusivity is something that the VNC board and this committee should reflect on and try to improve on. And a lot of times people who um, you know, uh, resort to making some of these very passionate comments that might come off rude, a lot of times um, that lack of uh, voices being heard and that lack of inequity, being the lack of representation is what reinforces people to be angry in outbursts like that, which is justified indignation. So I just wanna offer that for everybody on this committee, other committees, VNC in general, and as we move on to a, um, a new election cycle, people reflect on that and give more unhoused people and people of color, organic members, um, representation on this uh, board and council and committees. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Nick? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, some of the prior speakers are just are just lying and making statements that don't don't even make any sense. There's no elected officials on this homeless committee. Number one. Number two, the only elected official that can affect homelessness is, is Mike Bonin, who makes three hundred thousand dollars a year. He's the highest paid counsel in the United States with a $40,000 slush fund and a staff of 16. He has a larger staff than a U.S. congressman, and he only represents 250,000 people, and a congressman who makes 174,000 represents 750,000 people. So let's not, we can have differences of opinion. Let's just not make up things because it justifies what you're saying. And let's lay off the cursing because it's just not appropriate. And Frank, quite frankly, you should cut them off. Thanks, Nick. Marky. Hello? Yes. Oh, okay, uh, my name is uh, Kristen Markey. <clears throat> I just want to say that I think it's really important right now not to um, further the displacement of people, especially during a pandemic, but also especially after majority of the voters in California um, did not respect tenants enough to give them help. So I don't think the problem, or I, I don't think the solution is to simply um, you know, clean an area and hope that the problem, or I guess what you say as a problem, will go away. You have to actually help people and you have to give them housing. You have to give them essential needs. Not now, just because it's a pandemic, but all the time. And it's even worse that you're not doing anything right now. Um, I just think you guys need to be a, uh, do a better job. And I think it's pretty delusional that you think you're actually helping anybody. You're not. You're just making them suffer more. Thanks. Thanks. 
Um, Frank, you need to, people keep raising their hand. You need to cut, cut it off at some point. I've got somebody named B of A. I think I've. Hi, yes, this is Bofa. Um, I just want to comment that it's kind of gross that nobody on this committee is actually homeless and is here trying to make policy for homeless people. If you guys actually had input from homeless people, I can tell you they would probably ask for things like public restrooms. They would ask for more advocacy for affordable and <laughs> housing. There's so much that you could advocate for and you don't. And it shows that you don't actually talk to the people who are asking for these things. I'm calling as a member of Streetwatch LA. I work mm -hmm. with a lot of the people on the West side. And honestly, I would love it if you guys reached out to us and asked us about what solutions people actually want to see on the streets. I yield my time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks. Um, we're going to stop after Jesse. I've got about uh, seven or eight more hands here. Four more. Ab Abigail. Uh, just as a heads up, you can't restrict public comment during a meeting like this. Yes, Thank you. You, you. you can restrict time, but you can't tell people that they can't talk during general public comment. Uh, that's actually against the done policy. Thanks. Okay, wait a second. You know, I need to speak. You, once you call, once you say that's the end of public comment for this item, then that is the end. You don't go on for hours. Just keep letting people, you know, raise their hand. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Bofa and CJ, for your comments. Hi, uh, do I have time to respond to an earlier comment? Okay, great. We got Kendall Kaufman. Yeah, hi, um, that's me. Uh, can you hear me? Can hear you, yes. Yeah, I just uh, wanna second the fact that you guys are trying to make uh, homeless, unhoused dis decisions on the unhoused without actually taking into account the lives of the unhoused. You're dehumanizing and criminalizing people because they're inconvenient to you. And to be honest, that's disgusting on your part uh to be honest like i i just um i can't stand people who uh who literally do not know anything about the way people live and choose to make decisions about them and have the power to make decisions about that um and to, that it would actually benefit people you know, you know, you can make a decision that would actually benefit the unhoused, but instead you're choosing to benefit um, some random constituents that you think that are, I don't know, maybe going to get your vote. Uh, it's, it's, it's like you're volunteers. There's really no reason to be cruel. There's really no reason for you to actually be cruel. And yet you are choosing to be cruel um, against the unhoused uh, and, 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 and cleaning or whatever. That's, that's code for like, harassing uh, the unhoused uh it's 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 not even thank you it's, it's obvious Thanks, what you're doing. Uh, hello i'm back again can i make my comment now abigail i don't know why i can't successfully mute you i'm mean, Wait, I'm uh, hands her comment, though. <laughs> you never let her give her comment. You need to let her give her comment. You never gave your comment. I thought, I thought, okay, Abigail, go ahead. Sorry about that. I kind of was just responding um, to the comment about how Pacific Palisades has few, fewer visible unhoused residents. Um, and I'm a member of a nonprofit that works with unhoused people in West Los Angeles. And so I kind of have a little bit more background information about that. Um, the number, there are two reasons mostly why Pacific Palisades has fewer visible unhoused residents. That's because Palisades are closer to wilderness areas um, where they can camp without being seen by the unhoused and 
have less harassment. Um, it's also because some very wealthy HOAs in the Palisades have been paying a lot of money every year for an organization called the People Concerned to provide direct outreach to unhoused residents, which includes, um, first of all, direct street outreach that is paid and trained. Um, they also have interim housing, public bathrooms, and mental health advocacy for their unhoused residents. Um, so kind of Right. weaponizing their lack of visible unhoused residents against the unhoused residents of Venice is really egregious, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Frank, can you, can you moot, moot everybody after they speak? Uh, I, sometimes it does, and then sometimes it doesn't. I don't know okay, what's... I'm just um, curious. I'm having a hard time with it. Ansar Mohammed. We got one more after that, Jesse. Yeah, I wanted this. Uh, this is Stan. You, you guys know me as Brother Stan in Venice. I want to uh, speak very quickly. I know one minute is not enough time, but as a former uh, Venice Neighborhood Council representative for Oakwood, I want to commend these volunteers, uh, whether they ever been homeless or not. Just the mere fact that they are trying to address our own pandemic of the unhoused, I commend you, Frank, and those who's with you. Uh, I've been paying close attention to the violence that is surrounding the unhoused, not only the violence, but the gang activity uh, that is surrounding the unhoused because it's now impeding upon our public safety uh, initiative in Venice, which allows us to provide direct gang intervention services to active gang members. And what I'm finding out for those who don't know that about 75% of the, 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 uh, the encampments that is in and around the Venice area have a gang element attached to it. So we're gonna be uh, hopefully giving you all a report as it relates to what we're finding because the gang element that's attached to the, to the uh, Frank, encampment- We're at, lots, we're at a, a minute, of, Stan. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. So I knew it was gonna take more than that, but thank you guys. God bless you. Thank you, Stan. You're very welcome. Uh, Jesse's the last one. Justin, can you talk at, the, at another? Uh, we got to cut it off here. Allow to talk. Jesse? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jesse. I'm a doctoral student, and I also work for several organizations in the Venice and other West Side neighborhoods. Um, I just want to point out that, at least according to all available scientific evidence, um, a lot of the interventions that are proposed in terms of unhoused folks in the Venice area would actually work against you. Um, it's been shown time and again that displacement, that harassment, that forcibly moving people does not decrease unhoused residents. It doesn't decrease the number of people. It doesn't decrease the number of people moving into the neighborhood or the number of people leaving. It simply shuffles people around. I think that if you're interested in real lasting solutions, I certainly am. Um, we would love to work with you. Really, we would. We would love to find common ground on this and we would love to find real solutions to the issue of increasing numbers of unhoused folks in the Venice area. That's a minute. I think, thank you. Thank you. Um, we have one last hand here is Justin. Justin. Hi. May I begin? I yeah, I can hear you. Hi. Yeah, my name is Justine Jones. I'm Justine, a sorry. Yeah. I'm a lifelong resident of Los Angeles. Uh, Venice was my first home, and I am the third generation of my family to have resided in Venice. I am heartbroken that this is even on the agenda this evening and seriously question how you would justify this to yourself or your constituents, who you apparently only seem to regard as homeowners and well-heeled renters. Uh, let me put this in terms you can understand since you apparently don't recognize the Well, this is a public comment, so... Um, and I am making a public comment. If you're interested in one of the motions, they're coming up, so I'm not sure what what you mean by what they're, um, what I'm, they're doing. I'm talking about the sweeps that you're proposing. Well, those are coming up. So when we do, why don't you comment to those specifically? Okay, so I understand, you can talk. I understand that I mean held to a different standard than the other commenters. So you can go ahead and push me to the side and I will just wait. Thank you so much. 
you're not allowed to respond to people when they're making general public comment. It is you know general that. public comment. They can make comment about Frank, anything. Frank, are you going to mute general people or public not? Comment. I'm muting them. I just want to agree like that every other like public city agency I've been to when they have general public Is this going to continue with people allowed interrupting to each other? Hands? Okay, that's the that's the public comment. Our agenda states one minute on non-agendized items related to the homeless committee only. But they were a general comments. No, they were regarding the the motion. At least that. Why, why is she commenting? Why 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 are we having a discussion? Please mute everybody, Frank. Everybody gets muted. Let's go to the next item. We've had public comment. Let's go to the next item. And we, we're gonna hear from everybody again anyway. So let's just keep moving and let's well, be respectful sir, to each other. The general attitude of this council rather Frank, than- could you please mute everybody and unmute them when they raise their hand to speak. That's how it works. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Conduct violations. Yeah. No, it's not. Go read it. I it's think y'all general. need to read it. Yeah, you're not allowed to respond to us. So if you are doing that, then you clearly haven't read it. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not part of this group. But thank you. But you're wrong. Would anyone like me to read it out loud? <laughs> Frank, are you going to mute and mute everybody? This has got to stop. I'm trying to, but the goddamn Including thing won't Eva. let me mute. Eva's getting her legs. Yeah, yeah listen. You got to work on how you use the panel, but it's All right, mute I'm on mute now. Mute all. Okay. Just Ryan. as a heads up, I can still unmute myself. I'm not trying to say anything else. Just wanted to let you know that you haven't changed the uh, settings properly. Well, I don't. I don't know how to change the goddamn settings, man. I'm just sitting here. It says mute all. I mute all. Mute all. Is I don't know what else I can do. Is there a common thread between people who can't use Zoom and people who hate the unhoused? Frank, you What's muted that? the uh, panelists, not the attendees. The might be a Mute the attendees, not the panelists. I did it. I did the attendees, and it won't let me mute any of the attendees. It's not working, Frank, and they aren't being respectful, so I don't know what you're going to do because they're out of control. I, I understand that. Respectful. It's Helen just that I can't get this goddamn thing to stop. Motions. We wouldn't be out of control. Please move, we move on to, to the chair generally. report. Folks, this is Dexter. If I might propose, Frank said that I was going to give my report after. Why don't I just go ahead and get started now? Well, your um, report you guys, is, you, is, the, is now. So let's go on with your report, and I'll try to figure out how to unmute this. Okay, uh, Dexter, go ahead. Yes, hi, everyone. Um, this is Dexter uh, in Councilmember Bonin's office. Um, it's always an adventure to be in front of you, and tonight is no exception, but it's a genuine pleasure. Um, I have excellent news about the bridge home. Things are going very well inside. Um, there was one unfortunate incident um, where the LAPD had to be called to an incident of animal abuse. Um, but we're working with the person and we think that she will be able to uh, attend some dog training classes and, and get the dog back. And so we're feeling pretty good about that. SPY has placed five people into housing since I was last in front of you. And so I'm very pleased about that. That's about 10% of their population um, that's been placed into housing and they've been doing intake. They've been staying up around their maximum number. So we've been very pleased about that as well. Path again is holding steady um, on the adult side at the bridge home, and so we're we're happy with that. We're looking forward to uh, coordination with a couple of other groups um, to try to get some more housing, um, specifically shared housing, which I noticed was one of the things that this committee is planning on supporting if they pass motion number four. Um, as you know, that's one of Councilmember Bonin's priorities: is shared housing. Um, we're having discussion with a shared housing provider tomorrow. We're really excited about looking forward to. Hopefully that will result in some more housing placements from the adult side of the bridge home. Um, and uh, we're, we're really excited that um, 
motion number four in particular reflects some of council member Bonin's priorities like shared housing, encampment to home, safe parking, things of that nature. So I'm um, very pleased about that. Um, I do wanna speak a little bit to motion number three. Um, I don't believe that the Bureau of Sanitation has the resources to do this, even if it was requested. Um, as you know, they have the comprehensive cleanups in the special enforcement zone once a week, every Thursday. Uh, I would invite folks to come and join us there at 7.30 in the morning. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be joined by a couple of folks from LA CAN. Uh, we're regularly joined by our partners from Streetwatch, uh, Venice Catholic Worker, uh, who are out there observing um, the Bureau of Sanitation. Our team that is, is dedicated to Venice is doing an excellent, very competent, very thorough, very careful, very respectful job. Um, ensuring that people's, people's human rights are being respected, uh, you know, that, that they're being treated with dignity um, and that the area is being cleaned appropriately. Um, you know, the, the statistics are in the tons of items which are being, uh, being thrown away that, that individuals have surrendered entirely voluntarily um, because these cleanups are in the spirit of cooperation, collaboration um, and voluntary compliance. And sanitation has been very respectful of that uh, the protocols are developed by the Services Not Sweeps Coalition. And so we're very pleased with the way that that's gone so far. I mean, obviously, there are some issues that still remain, right? ADA compliance is an issue that remains. Um, and we're working on that. We're getting more storage in the bridge home. We're working on marking the sidewalk in certain places, um, you know, just to try to remind folks about ADA compliance. Um, and we are seeing more compliance, you know, particularly over the past month. Um, you know, but it's, it's a gradual thing and we're working with new people as people move from other areas, you know, um, particularly coming up from the beach, we've seen some of that. That's in the Venice Special Enforcement Zone. Some issues have, have come up related to that. Um, that being said, uh, you know, there, there has been a general um, trend in a positive direction in the Special Enforcement Zone um, on, several, on several aspects. Um, you know, I, I think that there's been more voluntary compliance. There's been more people, um, you know, seeing that sanitation is there to assist them in this regard and not to, uh, you know, not to hassle them, not to take their belongings away, um, not to destroy their life in, in Venice. Um, and so it's, it's important that we continue to work with people in a spirit of partnership and continue to build trust with folks um, you know, it's, it's a long-term project, right? Um, it, building trust builds the opportunity for people to get into to services, for people to be ready to accept help, for people to be ready to move into housing. So, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of steps, it's a lot of work, and uh, we're very happy to have a variety of partners who are helping us achieve that. Um, so we're, we're really appreciative of all that. Um, I am happy to take any of your questions now. Um, I've probably got about uh, 10, 15 minutes before I have to go. So I'll take a couple of questions now. Um, and then again, if you, want, if you want me to prepare answers to questions, please, members of the committee, members of the public, feel free to email me um, questions ahead of time so that I can you know, kind of be prepared to report on specific things um, that, that you're particularly interested in. Um, because, you know, I, I am happy to continue to give these general reports, but I would love to delve into the specific issues that concern you the most. Um, yeah, so that's, that's where we stand right now. Um, I'll, take, I'll take some questions. What time is the meeting tomorrow? Where are your first meeting? Uh, yeah, so tomorrow's the regular comprehensive cleanup of the special enforcement zone. Um, the Bureau of Sanitation folks are going to get out there about seven o'clock and meet in the Gold's Gym parking lot. Um, and then the cleanup is going to start at third and uh, rows, uh, or usually starts at third and rows. So that, that's, I think, where we're planning to start. Um, of course, there are circumstances which could cause that to change, but usually we're starting around third and rows around about 730. Um, Thanks. Yeah, folks. no problem. Yeah, and if you nice. if you can't make it out this Thursday, we'll be out there next Thursday. So, um, you know that's that's uh, that's the plan at least. Good to see you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else with questions for Dexter? Um, I just have a quick question. Is there any way to cancel these cleanups 
for sweeps? Uh, so there's no sweeps taking place in Venice right now. That's not oh, a thing that's awesome. happening. Sorry. Yeah, Vicky. Uh, yeah, Dexter. I think I think there's often some confusion um, when people say sweeps, and even in like the motion that's coming up. Uh, some of this is the fact that sanitation wasn't doing much of anything during the height of the COVID. And things got really backed up, as you know, right around bridge housing. Um, so I think that should be distinguished because them cleaning up some of that would help everyone. This is not breaking down an encampment. This is not making an encampment move, but this is simply cleaning up like, like Gold's parking lot was cleaned up finally. So we appreciate what you're doing, but but if sanitation could, you know, pay a little bit more attention to the yeah, I know the Golds happen. parking lot issue is an issue, Vicky, and I promise we're working now with Golds um, to try to get a fence around the parking lot, mm -hmm. um, which I think will help with some of the issues surrounding that. I'm sorry, I've got a helicopter overhead. I'm not sure you're going to be able to hear me. Um, but I, I think getting the fence around the Gold's Gym parking lot is going to help with some of those issues. We're working now with Gold's on that. Um, and so um, if, we can, if we can make that happen, um, that, that should be able to help sanitation there. As you know, um, as, as I've mentioned, I think before in the past, it's difficult for sanitation to do any work there because of the poor condition of the sidewalk as it exists. Um, and so, you know, they do their best to, to pick up trash in that area, uh, you know, and, and in collaboration with some of the folks there, um, you know, but, but as you know, that's a particularly difficult block for them to work on for a variety of reasons that are primarily uh, due to the physical geography of the site. Uh, but it is something that we're working on, uh, trying to, you know, trying to figure out a way, uh, first of all, to get the Gold's Gym parking lot closed off and, uh, Second of all, to uh, help those folks who are on that block into housing. So, right. Thank yeah. you, Dexter. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Anything else I should be aware of? Uh, <clears throat> I, I do have one question, uh, if there's time. You do it as co host. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, she can do everything. I don't know what's happening. Okay. Did somebody, somebody else had a question? I'm sorry. Uh, I did. I just, I had a quick question about. I'm sorry, sir. It sounds like you've cut off. I can't hear your question. Hey, Dexter, this is Stan. How you doing? Stan, how are Stan you, Stan? Good. I wanted to Frank, ask you. Frank, you cut off what? Jesse. Frank, you cut off Jesse. I did. Okay, I, I have, didn't I have, cut I have, off I anybody. I don't know I'll what wait. happened there. I I'll didn't, I didn't I hear the question. previous question, but I'll hear from Stan, and then if the other if the other person is going to ask something, then we can go back to that after Stan. I've got I've got time ask, for more than one. So I just want to ask <laughs> the process when we when we identify the unhoused who is looking to get uh, services there at, at your site. What what advice can you give me and others uh, that is on the ground doing the intentional outreach? What advice can you give us uh, in terms of making sure that this person can get over there to actually get services from you guys? Yeah, so um, Stan, uh, the, the bridge home is not a site where uh, services are provided to people who walk up to the door. Um, and so that's, that's not really an option. And right now, because of the Department of Health regulations, the adult portion of the bridge home is not allowed to take more people in. We're hopeful that as the, some people start to get housing, um, out of the adult side of the bridge home, they'll be allowed to take people in to replace those folks, kind of stay at the same number, which is about 80% of their total capacity right now. Um, so hopefully uh, there'll be space for that. And the way that people can connect to those services um, is through our local LASA team, uh, the, the main LASA outreach person who's in charge of um, specifically the bridge home list is a gentleman named Joey. Um, I can put you in touch with him, Stan, if you send me an email, uh, but he's the one who's responsible for getting people onto the list. And there's a, there's a long list of folks who would like to be in the Venice Bridge home because they know how successful it is right now. Um, but unfortunately, they're just not allowed to take intake on the adult side. Now, if the individual is between 18 and 24 years old, um, there is regularly space on the, the transition age youth side of the bridge home 
as they're doing so many housing placements, um, family reunifications, uh, things of that nature. So uh, if the individual is between 18 and 25 years old, we have more opportunity to potentially get them in. Um, but again, that's through LASA and our partner SPY, Safe Place for Youth. Um, so yeah, just, just go ahead and shoot me an email, Stan, and I can, I can get those contact details for Joey over to you. Uh, was there Appreciate that it. other question from the previous person? I'm, I'm uh, cutting off all of the, uh, the public comment here because oh, okay. this is supposed to be just the only the, um, the, um, panel, the panelists are supposed to be commenting on this. So uh, I'm going to cut that Jesse off. Speak. Okay, Frank. Um, what, I'll take any other questions then from the panelists, I suppose, if there's anything else. Anybody else got a question? Mike, Brian, Liz, Vicki? This is Mike, and I, I spoke or communicated with Dexter earlier today in regard to Motion 3. So I'll have more to say about Motion 3, which is really coming from Dexter. Uh, when it's the time to discuss that motion. Thank you, Dexter. Yeah, no problem. And I think I covered at least one of the points that I sent you there, Mike, which was the point about sanitation not having the resources or capacity to do it, even if it was requested, um, you know, simply because of their work across the city. Uh, I just want to emphasize that because I do have to go shortly. And so I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to stay for the uh, stay for the motions tonight. Maybe Proposition J money can go to that, some of that. Dexter, I just wanted to thank you for uh, being here and the, the changes that you're making at the Bridge Home. Um, a lot of us see it. We've had meetings with you personally and just wanted to thank you on behalf of the, the neighborhood and the Venetians. You're doing a really great job there. Thank you. Well, Thanks, Brian, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to be of service to all of our neighbors. So, um, you know, I feel very fortunate to be able to um, you know, work with the folks who are providing the services, work with the folks who are on the street, um, you know, and work with our housed and unhoused neighbors to try to alleviate this. Um, I mean, what we all know is a fundamental disgrace that there are so many people who are without housing in one of the richest cities in one of the richest countries. You know, it's, it's preposterous. And obviously it's a long way to go, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm appreciative of everyone who's putting good work in to uh, help to alleviate people's immediate needs and their long-term needs. And I'm, I'm really pleased by that. So thank you. I, I, I did have one quick question because I've noticed sure, that Brian. people are talking. Um, you know, we say it's really successful and everybody's really working hard on the inside, but I still seem to see, and a lot of people comment all the time that people are in the bridge home, but then return to their encampments. And so they go in for the benefits of the food and showers and storage, but then immediately leave and they are hanging back out <clears throat> in their normal encampments, which, you know, that's obviously not what it was meant to be. So is there any way to address how you're going to keep people in to, to receive the treatment and the triage work versus the free yeah, I mean, to go I, out and go back to the encampments? I can absolutely speak to that. I actually had a conversation with um, one of our, for uh, folks who we've identified who's, who's doing that behavior. And honestly, I mean, one of the first things that I have to say is to shout out the incredible work of PATH and SPY who've helped to keep that number to an absolute minimum. Because as you know, at the Venice Bridge Home, we have about 100, 120, 130 residents depending on how SPY is doing it at any given moment. Um, and only four individuals are regularly identified as maintaining the, the dual residency. Um, you know, you can contrast that to other bridge homes across the city. You know, for example, the one in San Pedro with 45 residents, they say over 20 are maintaining the dual residency. And so I think really it's a testament to the good work that PATH and SPY have already done um, in terms of the way that they're providing services, the way that they're making it easy for people to be just in the bridge home. Um, but obviously, you know, four is more than zero, and we'd like people to, to live only in the bridge home if they're living in the bridge home. Um, so we're working on providing more storage. Uh, storage space is an issue. I had a long discussion with a gentleman today um, that storage space was an issue. 
Um, he brought up that he hadn't gotten a, a Narcotics Anonymous group in the bridge home. And I know that they're, they've just started one, um, you know, and that's, that's a factor for him. Um, there are a couple of other issues which surround some of these specific folks, but we know that with more storage and with more um, services being provided inside the bridge home, uh, that we should hopefully be able to eliminate this issue. Um, Cause obviously the bridge home should be for people who want to use it specifically, um, you know, to get themselves into housing. Uh, the, the bridge home should be a tool right. for that. Um, you know, but I, I would say that it's important to us that, um, you know, we meet people where they are. And if that means that they need a little bit more time to get everything squared away and kind of gradually move themselves into the bridge home. Um, you know, I think with our numbers where they are, we can, we can be okay with that for now. Um, you know, but we're working to, to help people get into the bridge home and stay there. Um, at least until they get into housing. That's something that's really important to us as a priority for council member Bonnet. Um, that's a priority for our bridge home operators. So, um, like I said, the additional storage should be coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, I've been in touch with that's them about great. that. Um, and some of the other factors are, are in process, you know, um, like this gentleman was just unaware that they had started this group and it may be because he's just not generally in the bridge home during the day. And so he's missed that um, because it does take place during the day. And so I told him about it and that's a resource now that he has that'll help him, you know, be able to address those issues in the bridge home. And so those are, those are two examples of the things that Path and Spy are doing to, to make sure that um, the dual residency issue is kept to an absolute minimum. You know, but I do understand why answer. people are maintaining that. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks. All right, Dexter. Well, thanks okay. so much. Thank you, Frank. I'm going to go now. Um, appreciate right. everyone. Please, please don't hesitate to send me any comments or questions. Everyone should have my email. Um, members of the public, my email is my first name dot my last name, Dexter dot O'Connell. O'Connell's O apostrophe C O N N E L L, but you won't find an apostrophe in my email address. So just O-C-O-N-N-E-L-L -L at lacity.org. Um, hope everyone has a lovely evening. Thanks, Dexter. All right, Thanks, bye. bye. Um, just to comment, uh, Jesse and Daryl, I apologize, but uh, we weren't. Uh -huh. There wasn't supposed to be any public comment on the uh, on his presentation. I apologize. Anyhow. Um, the chair report is, uh, you know, I'm screwing this up royally, so uh, we'll uh, we'll keep fumbling forward, and uh, and I apologize for my inability to make this function properly. We're on what is now instead of a motion, it's an item for discussion. Uh, which is titled motion number one. This is an item that had a, an attachment that was attached to it, which is on the web, is on the website, is on the uh, VNC website, uh, right next to the agenda under the homeless committee is the attachment. Um, but the motion is uh, a motion to, um, to uh, um, allow the, uh, to uh, the motion, the request or the discussion topic is a motion to discuss uniting the LAPD to enforce existing codes on vagrant and excessive behavior in the parking lot behind Spark located on Venice Boulevard. Um, we, we should, uh, I guess we could open that up to, uh, as a discussion item, the public should be able to comment no. on it. So we, huh? I think we're no. doing public comment on, on motions only. All right. So in that case, as the panel talks, what do we want to do? I mean, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, what's your thoughts on this? As an item for discussion, I'm not quite sure what it what it it's telling us. Well, have you talked to this Tom Wright guy? No, Tom Wright got put through through the uh, adcom, so I haven't talked directly to him. 
It was uh, brought up by ADCOM to be put on the meeting. I think someone needs to talk with him. I mean, I think that this, you know, this is a case of one parking lot. And to me, that is an emotion. If somebody wants to make a motion asking for LAPD to work with them on all public parking lots. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, I don't know why it would be specific to just the one behind Spark, but um, um, and well, of you, course, go ahead. I, I would just like assign Tom Wright to one of us to do a follow-up conversation with him. That and, would be perfect. And find out what he wants to do. I haven't seen the, the attachment, so. I don't want to waste yeah. people's time here tonight trying to create something that we don't know what we're trying to do or not do. Exactly. So let's get. To I agree to that. Uh, who would like to pick the ball up on that? Anybody? I, yeah, I'm happy to have him call me. You just pass. I don't know how to get in touch with the guy. So if you uh, want to give him my contact information, that'd be great. Okay. Will do. Uh, so I'll, I'll make sure that Tom gets uh, in touch with Brian. Okay. Um, anybody else have any comment on that? I, I do very quickly. Uh, I think that the LAPD would kind of laugh at this. But why would the LAPD want non-police officers to help them enforce criminal laws other than to report a, a potential uh, code violation. What does a non-policeman even know about what constitutes excessive behavior? Uh, is it a crime if somebody does something? It's not for an individual to do that. We have police and it's up to them to determine what constitutes a violation of the vacancy laws or what's a excessive behavior. And uh, I, I don't even want to see this motion I don't either. It's, it's. I agree. What's next? But I think if you can meet with him, maybe there's, uh, maybe there's more to it than, than that. Okay. And, and there might be other issues involved yeah. there. I'm happy to, happy to meet with him and report back okay. to you. Okay. Uh, let's go. Uh, uh, there's no vote on that. Let's go to motion two, or not motion two, but item for discussion two which is a... Um, Wait, can I just ask, are we able to submit any comments for motion one? No. No, okay. that's why we were, we were doing that. We're just doing the discussions with the panels. Okay, sorry. It's not a motion. We'll be down to the motions are, are uh, three and four. Three and four. Um, okay, the item for discussion is Matthew Schwartz wants to set up soup kitchens in the Venice community in an effort to mend relations between homeless and provide much needed assistance. Attached is a pro proposal that includes the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Please reach out to discuss any questions or concerns. We have yet to hear a response from the homeless committee. Yeah. Um, I, had a, I had a conversation with him uh, and I told him that, you know, there's dozens of organizations that come, whether they're permitted or not, to uh, provide kind services, pass out hygiene kits, give food, do all those different things. And But as the homeless committee, we aren't authorized to give them a permit or give them a location that they can operate. So I suggested to them to contact the Venice Chamber of Commerce, um, particularly uh, their president, and said, and I, and I saw an email that went back that they had contacted so I don't think this is a homeless committee uh, thing that we're supposed to give. We encourage everybody to do what they feel they need to do and, and help the homeless any way they can. Um, but I don't think this is in our court. I agree. Okay. And you had a discussion with him? I did. That was passed over by ADCOM. I wonder... Um, hmm. I had a conversation okay. with Matthew and put him in touch with uh, with George. 
Okay. Because George is the one that helps organize the Venice sign lighting and if there's permits or if they have to serve food, you know, all those things you and I can't, this committee can't give permission to set up right. a, a giveaway booths and because it's not our properties, it's nothing that we can do. So if they need to take a property in order to take a corner or a parking lot, they have to get permission from the city or from the Venice Neighborhood Council that would lead them to where they go to get their permit. Got it. Anybody else comment on that? Yes. Okay, Liz. Uh, the fact that food is involved, uh, the city has been very uh, reluctant to let the neighborhood council even have so much as refreshments at meetings. <laughs> so uh, setting up soup kitchens or, or having a lot to do with soup kitchens would be very uh, legally difficult. I'd yeah. like to do it though. Abigail, can you not interrupt our meeting? Thank you. Um. All right, well, there's no motion on that and no vote to be had, so we're down to uh, Hello, I have motion. my hand raised for public comment since you there's, called on We weren't public taking commentary. public comments on the, uh, on the items for discussion. Is Liz a member of the... Yes, she is. Yes, she is. You didn't state when you were taking general public comment that... Yeah. Frank, can you mute everybody, please? I, I can't mute them all. I'm... You Tell didn't you tell man. us that we couldn't talk about that. We didn't. We're, we're, we're telling you now, sir. How's but that? You didn't tell us before we See, gave. Comes every it, time it, I do a mute, it, then we, it comes right You didn't back. tell us before we gave general public comment. We, 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 we had this discussion when we amended the agenda, sir. No, you kept calling them motions. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know why this thing won't mute, but. Right, this is a point of order. There is no motion unless someone makes a motion. I'm having a hell of a time. I don't know what the fuck to do with this damn thing. Anyhow, okay, so um, we go to motion three. Um, I'll read that one out. Uh, There's a lot of whereas is okay. This is a uh, Ava Green uh, presented this one. Whereas recently released homeless count for the Venice 49% increase in that population, total 1685 at the time of the count in January. And whereas residents have seen the rise of human feces, trash piles, waste, trash piles, food waste, needles, and needles on sidewalks and in their front yards and alleys. And whereas many people that live near the homeless encampments in Venice have seen a surge in rats and mice scurrying in their trash cans and finding ways into their homes and apartments. And whereas there have been no encampment cleanups since late March, 2020, and whereas the city council voted 10 to four on Wednesday, July 29th, 2020, to bring back comprehensive cleanups in designated zones around the bridge housing sites and backers of the motion said it was needed in order to maintain cleanliness and keep the promises that city leaders made to residents. And whereas there are many homeless encampments in Venice that are not near the bridge housing site, but which also which, which are also sites of accumulation of human sewage, food waste, and which acts as magnets for rodents and whereas October 2019, LA County officials declared an outbreak of typhus linked to overcrowding around Skid Row, and whereas a major, a major outbreak of hepatitis A in San Diego linked to homelessness killed 20 people two years ago, and whereas the growing homeless populations create unsanitary conditions that contrib contribute to the spread of disease, Typhoid, typhus, bubonic That's plague. That's true. You can actually sweep away in. typhoid with a broom. Thank you.
Um, Typhoid, typhus, bubonic plagues, salmonella. According to infectious disease specialist, Dr. Jeffrey Klossner of UCLA, who has stated that there is no time to waste in addressing these looming public health threats. And whereas now <clears throat> with M MRSA and COVID-19 within the homeless community, these conditions more than ever must be kept as sanitary as is possible with those living in encampments. And whereas Los Angeles City Council, Joe Basciano, who represents Watts in the Harbor area, stated recently that growing rat infestations across the cities are emblematic of how we lost control of the homeless trash and encampment issues. And we can't protect the greatest symbol of our own democracy, our own city hall. If we can't protect our own staff from medieval diseases, then we should all pack up and go home. And whereas CATS USA Pest Control brought in to, ex to assess the areas around City Hall and nearby buildings warned that homeless people create harborage of rodents according to their report issued December 28, 2019 and that the company found poor sanitary conditions including leftover food, human waste and hypodermic needles and recommended that the city clear away the homeless population living in the Civic Center. And whereas studies have shown that the only way to prevent these medieval diseases and prevent possible plague throughout outbreak is through sanitation. And whereas the LA County Public Health Department has stated garbage and rubbish is an, ascent, is an excellent food source for rodents and garbage should be stored in rodent proof containers. Receptacles should be rust resistant, watertight <clears throat> and have tight fitting lids scored. Stored items should be elevated at least a minimum of 18 inches above ground, cleared ground and stored 12 inches from walls and fences. And the CDT recommends keep food in thick plastic or metal containers with tight lids, prevent contact with rodents and, clean, and cleaning up your home, workplace or campsite. And whereas it is frequently not possible for those in encampments to abide by these rules and whereas there is serious concern over the diseases that can develop an encampment citywide, including in Venice and that these diseases will also infect housed residents through the pro proliferation of rodents. <clears throat> now, therefore, be it resolved, the Venice Neighborhood Council calls upon the city of Los Angeles and its sanitation department to clean all homeless encampments in Venice two times a month, including the temporary shifting of all possessions, tents, furniture, et cetera, to allow thorough cleaning of sidewalks, parkways, and any other public areas, including power washing, CDC guidelines notwithstanding, and that the city provide and service rat proof trash containers at all encampments of 10 or more people. Uh, upon passage, okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that. The, the, uh, it's upon passage, this resolution shall be forwarded to Mayor Eric Garcetti, Councilman Mike Bonin, President of the Board of Public Works, Kevin James, Department of Sanitation, General Manager Enrique Saldivar and the entire city council. So this is Eva's um, um, motion. Um, these seven participants have their hands up. Uh, so uh, does anybody, um, well, I, I've made the motion, so does anybody want to second the motion? Anybody want to second the motion? I'll second the motion. Liz Wright will second the motion. All right. Uh, so we go to public comment. There's 19 participants raised their hands. Um, that's 21 participants have raised their hands. Uh, 23 participants have raised their hands. So, Frank, do you have help? Do you have help for this? Or no. are we going to run into it's going to be an open mic situation? We're going to be completely out of control. I totally want to respect the time and the one minute that everybody has to give. But if everybody's going to chime in the way we did before, we are either going to have to terminate this meeting until you can figure out how to run the system because it's going to be, it's going to be crazy here in a minute. 
totally want to hear the people. They have the right to speak. But once they finish, we can't have everybody chime in back, back and forth. Frank, I'll run a timer. Um, OK, I, let's attempt it. Um, I'm all for it. If that's out of control, I'm willing to uh, close it down. I mean, people have to be respectful both ways of everybody. Right. Um, we start out, we got Mike Bravo on the top of the list here. Set the pace for us, Mike. All right, y'all. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. I'll send this motion to the premise and points of the motion are oriented in fear and they're highly debatable as far as the data goes, aside from the just generally disgusting tone of it. Um, also, clean and safe are code words for racism and economic inequity, enforcing policies. So I like to think that most people here are just, you know, um, ignorant or just unconscious of some of the ways that um, they impact racism and classism in their community. And there's a, a book called Everyday Language of White Racism, which I recommend highly. Um, and I understand the, the frustration with a lot of like the, the cleanliness and the sanitary issues. But the problem with this motion, like I mentioned earlier, is that it's not inclusive of the people that it will be directly affecting unless there is a sincere safeguard and concerns being accounted for in these safe and clean motions, they will always be ugly and unfair. And also too, I think it's just not right because the previous motion um, about communication, developing relationship with the unhoused population was shut down uh, with no second approval or with no approval, but this motion three, time it promotes this yeah. false uh, uh, premise motion. It's it's going through or being- pushed Time through. on that. Yeah. Time on that, Mike. Sorry. Thanks, Thanks right. Mike. Uh, writing. Eva. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yes. Um, you know what's racist? Saying that clean and safe is racist. That's racist. There's a lot of hysterics surrounding this motion. When all it calls for is rat proof trash cans and cleaning of sidewalks and encampments. It's not calling for their removal. Did you read the motion? The current conditions for the homeless are terrible. And I'm pretty shocked that you want the homeless to live in rat infested areas and in their own feces. That's just Julie, we want them to live in houses, but you guys don't support that. Okay. We can't have this. Can I start? Am I losing my time? She interrupted. No, just be go ahead and speak. All right. Go ahead and speak. The current conditions of the homeless are terrible. And I'm pretty shocked that you want the homeless to live in rat infested areas and in their own feces. A lot of you are service providers. The LA County Public Health Department says garbage and rubbish are excellent food sources for rodents. Get rat proof trash cans and approve this motion and clean the encampments. That's all that this is calling for. It's not saying remove them. So calm the hysterics. Thank you. Thanks. Zach? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, your motion notes the sharp rise in the homeless population. Does this motion call for more public housing? No, it calls for punishment. Does this motion call for setting up more public restrooms? No, it calls for harassment. Your motion uses some of the most Nazi-esque language I've seen to describe those living on the streets with constant effort to associate unhoused people with rats and disease an obvious effort to vilify and dehumanize the unhoused by Eva Gr Braun Green, the author of this motion. Your motion actually says CDC guidelines notwithstanding, a brazen admission that you know this motion is against scientific and medical consensus, but your hatred for the unhoused apparently is a bigger priority than public health. There are any number of avenues that this committee could pursue that would actually help our unhoused neighbors that would make a positive impact that would help those who need it. But rather than pursue those, you've fallen back on the old failed draconian punishment methods uh, that have been around for years. And the time's result... up on that, Zach, sorry. B of A. Bova. Hi there. 
Uh, yeah, both of these nuts. Uh, I just want to make it clear that we are not trying to make people live in filth. We are simply trying to get you to treat people right and actually advocate for housing rather than asking LA san sanitation to come by and steal people's belongings. You know, I have a friend who, uh, when a sweep was conducted in Venice, lost his violin, his skateboard, and his tent. He had to get a new one and had to sleep on the sidewalk with no shelter after that. That's what happens when you send LA sanitation in to do these sweeps. It's not human. Maine. That's why every single homelessness organization has called you to tell you not to do this. You're clearly not talking to the people actually experiencing what's happening when a sweep happens. You don't, you don't see how badly LA San treats homeless people who don't have anything except for whatever's in their tent and whatever they can carry in a bag, which is what the city allows them to do. If you actually want good conditions Thank you. for housing. That's one minute. Sorry. We're not in charge of housing. What do you mean you're not in charge of housing? You're the homelessness. Fucking We're man. not in charge of housing. The hell is this? Helen? I uh, just want to say that if people have to bring in Nazis, they pretty much lost any validity in their conversation. Since when do we think it's okay to allow people to live in filth? I don't think anybody does. And what's, what's fair about allowing a mentally ill person to decide that they don't want to live in a clean space? We're talking maid service here, basically. Allowing people to come in and clean these areas that, that aren't clean and aren't sanitary. And, you know, I can't understand why anybody would object to the installation of rat-proof trash cans where there are large encampments because there is clearly a lot of trash and garbage. This is not sanitary. It's a public health issue for everybody, the housed and the unhoused. And I'm extremely offended at the incivil discourse of some of these people who are interrupting the meeting constantly. It's appalling. Thank you. Thank you. Rihanna? <laughs> Oh, that's funny, Helen. Um, I think it sounds kind of like a Nazi to say that bringing up Nazism loses all validity. But anyways, um, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about with maid service. Um, you should watch videos of sweeps because um, as Bofa said, they really, they destroy people's lives. People lose their tents. People have lost their parents' ashes in sweeps, their heart medication. A man in Koreatown died because LA Sanitation took his heart medication away in his sleep a sweep. So Helen and others, I hope you guys go through economic hardship at some point in your lives and you wind up on the sweeps and you get to see what it's really like, because obviously you have no idea what reality is really like for 60,000 people in Los Angeles County. I yield my time. Fuck all of you. Lovely. You're not allowed to respond during public comment. That's a Brown Act violation. Lisa? Yeah, this motion is preposterous. It's absurd. I, I just, it just shows the disgust that uh, Eva has towards the unhoused population that she spends every month writing new motions to be against them as much as possible. To list all these crazy things about diseases, e even bringing up the hepatitis thing from San Diego. You know, the reason those, that hepatitis outbreak broke open was because of sweeps. People for an all-star game were pushed away from toilets and services. And for Vicki to say this isn't about sweeps, read the motion. It does say to make people actually move. We can't have people do this. And for to say that there's been no cleaning since March, please. I'm out there monitoring the sanitation all week long everybody's welcome to come tomorrow morning to the comprehensive cleanup. We've been doing it for over eight weeks now. Things are being cleaned. Thanks, Lisa. Seven. Marky. Hi. Um, I just want to say that I really abhor the language that is used in this motion. I think it is really unfair and disgusting to 
you know, associate all this with houses people because they really do need housing. They need access to health care. They need access to all these things in order to not live in these current situations. And by ripping them up from wherever they've stayed at for a couple of days constantly is only going to make matters worse because there's no no time for stability, no time to figure things out. It's just all optics. It's artificial optics just for Venice to look more appealing to whoever comes to visit Venice. So you want to make California look pretty for everybody when it's not the reality. And it's just really at putting tape on a stab wound is not solving. Thanks. Anything. That's a minute. Abigail. Hello. Um, just kind of clarifying for all of us that we are not objecting to the installation of rat proof trash cans, but we are advocating against theft from unhoused people under the guise of cleaning and sweeps like this. In fact, we would gladly, readily, and energetically advocate for any type of resource that would help and benefit our unhoused neighbors. That's the only reason why we're here. Thanks. Uh, the end. Amarita. Hi, um, I'm calling to speak strongly against motion three, both as a community member and as a medical doctoral student coordinating a mobile clinic which serves our unhoused neighbors in Venice. I'm here to add specific observations about the negative health implications of these sweeps, since the language of the motion purports to justify them by distorting and misinterpreting health based language. So let me clarify, no public health specialist would suggest that displacing unhoused people and taking their possessions constitutes an appropriate response to any public health crisis. Places, nor would they ever suggest that any human creates quote-unquote harborage for any infectious disease or pest. I personally, in the, conduct of, in the context of providing care, have seen how sweeps lead to loss of property, including vital life-sustaining medications such as those for high blood pressure, heart failure, and diabetes, which can directly lead to hospitalizations and death. There's more I'd like to say, but my specific alternative to what you're proposing is to offer more services to our unhoused neighbors, namely housing options, as well as restrooms, hygiene stations, and other ways to maintain Time. their safety. Data suggests that the impact of sweeps... Um, sorry. Thank you. Matt? Or... Yeah, Matt. Hi, my name is Matt. I'm also a health provider who has worked with unhoused individuals in the Venice community for almost five years now. I'm here to speak as like I'm reading in strong opposition to motion number three, because I've seen firsthand how these encampment sweeps harm and injure my patients. Unhoused individuals in LA, we know have a life expectancy 30 years less than house individuals of the same county. I share this because I don't want there to be any doubt or uncertainty around the public health consequences of motion three if passed. It means needless harm and injury, avoidable morbidity, and frankly, mortality for unhoused neighbors. Sweeps, whether they're called sweeps or cleanings, are a threat to public health. Not an asset, as the language of the motion implies when it talks about hepatitis and medieval disease. In fact, sweeps do not slow the spread of disease. What they certainly do do is accelerate the effects of disease on already vulnerable individuals. Let me shed light on a couple ways that they do this. I can think of a dozen patients of mine who have lost essential medications from sweeps, things for high blood pressure, hypertension, uh, HIV, and mental illness. I can also think about a number of folks who have lost identification birth certificates that are essential keys to social services. Whether you call it temporary shifting of possessions, this ruins all, all of our progress. Matt, that's a minute, Matt. Sorry. Daryl? Can you hear me? Yes. I would suggest that you take everything out except the first half of the therefore be it, and include, be it resolved, the Venice Neighborhood Council calls upon the city of Los Angeles and its sanitation department to clean all homeless encampments in Venice with keeping the idea 
that the that the homeless are entitled to a clean area to stay in. Thank you. Thanks, Cheryl. Margaret Clark. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, wow. Eva Green really hates homeless people. <laughs> Um, there's so much problematic about this motion, but I think the thing that initially struck me about it is the phrase, in spite of CDC guidelines. I don't understand why on earth, in the middle of a pandemic that literally gets worse every day, Eva Green or anyone on this council would presume to know better than the CDC how best to prevent the spread of COVID and other diseases in our community. You clearly know what you're suggesting is in contravention to public health and safety recommendations, so I imagine that whoever wrote this is also aware that the hepatitis A outbreak that they're referencing in San Diego was also exacerbated by short-sighted motions like this one, which forced displacement on vulnerable communities. Uh, the notion that there's no cleaning in these areas, which I'm guessing probably people on this committee are also aware of, is completely ridiculous. They're cleaned every eight weeks as part of the special enforcement zone, um, which is not to say that we wouldn't advocate for more resources for hygiene and um, public safety for our unhoused neighbors. We certainly- Time, that's time. Sorry, Margaret. Uh, okay. Stephen Friday. Hi. Um... Yeah, so I just wanted to oppose the motion. Um, I guess, to me, the thing that stands out the most is the language of this motion. Um, it comes across as well in uh, the comments from the author of the motion. You can, it, it clearly stands out that there is complete separation between the terms residents and people and the term homeless. I think you have to understand that. Um, how unhoused people in this community are people. They are our neighbors, they live here, just like all of us. They just don't have houses, that's it. Um, this is disgusting and I just think that the, the committee, the council, the city should not want to associate themselves with this type of hostile language. Uh, it, I am shaking it, like it, it, it pisses me off, honestly, but I oppose this motion and it's, you, you guys have got to just provide services to people. Just help people Thanks, out. Thank That's you. a minute. Sam? Can you hear me? Yes. So yeah, I just want to call in opposition of this uh, motion, just like ev about everybody else. Um, if you're more offended by the lack of decorum on this call than you are by the treatment um, of our unhoused neighbors, then you should really do some reflecting on what that says about you. Um, I am disgusted uh, by how this motion talks about those neighbors and the lack of uh, care it shows for them. Um, if you think that like these sweeps are like maid service, you clearly have never seen one. You haven't seen somebody crying as uh, whatever valuable thing is being crushed in the back of a trash compactor. You haven't felt that. Um, and you probably should just to educate yourself. It's, it's something no one should have to go through, but if you're gonna make others go through it, you should know what it feels like. Um, we do not need any more of these sweeps. They displace people, they put all of us in danger and they cause more trauma that just- uh, Thanks, Sam. People That's a minute. Thank you, Sam. That was a really good comment. Eric? Uh, I'll be very quick here, uplifting uh, all the comments here, uplifting especially the medical community's comments that these sweeps actually do more harm for the community and the unhoused community as well. Um, these, I just want to say this neighborhood council is a farce and has zero legitimacy to rule on anything with how tonight's meeting has gone. Not sure how you can determine the lives of hundreds of people, thousands of people who are already housing insecure and living in traumatic condition, conditions. It is beyond me and you should not be allowed to exist as a body to rule on anything. 
Um, I'm not really going to uh, um, appeal to your humanity because it's clear that you have none. So I just want to say that Bonin's office already said that he doesn't have the resources to even do this. So this motion should be struck. Uh, I do want to say sweeps are extremely harmful. They accelerate disease um, and that none of you have obviously been to a sweep and you refuse to even use the term to call them a housekeeping service is unbelievably offensive. There are armed police. There are people throwing away people's belongings into uh, trash compactors and the police are laughing at them. Go to servicesnotsweeps.com. Go to Streetwatch Twitter and you can- Thanks, stop. Eric. Olivia. Thanks, Eric. I can hear Olivia. you. Olivia. You got me? Hi. If yeah, this is just, Olivia, yeah. Yes, this is Olivia. I, I just wanted to add my voice to um, those who are strongly opposing this motion. Um, as a social service provider and a neighbor, I see how detrimental this is to our unhoused neighbors, um, especially in the realm of important um, vital documents and medications and yeah, personal identification documents that um, our unhoused neighbors need to get housed. Um, and it's really sad and unfortunate to see that this motion has even come up because these sweeps are um, what prevent our unhoused neighbors from getting their housing. Um, and it's um, a lot of personal property and things that are very dear to people that gets lost within these sweeps as well as in the displacement and the trouble that, that brings our service provider community um, is one that really holds us back from helping our unhoused neighbors. Time. Thanks, Olivia. Mm -hmm. Nick. Yeah, I mean, it really needs to be an education to some of these people in the audience who obviously don't live in Venice. Uh, what they don't seem to understand <laughs> is the only person who could do anything about these problems is Mike Bond. And you're, you're at the wrong meeting, my friend. The meeting you should be at is, a, is an L.A. council meeting and bring your <laughs> about housing. Do do bot. I poop out of my doo doo. <laughs> I poop out of my doo doo bot. Indicative of your All right, I gotta, I gotta terminate the meeting, Frank. Um, You're gonna terminate the meeting, Frank. I can't, I obviously can't control the uh, the back and forth. Brian, so, poops uh, out of his I'm gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna terminate the meeting and we'll try to hit it up again. Frank, is, is there a way to just remove people from the meeting when they're misbehaving? Because uh, uh, I thought there was. This is really I can't, I can't even get the damn thing to mute, so I can't. No, but know. not muting, but yeah. just get them out of the meeting because they're not being respectful. I mean, interrupting and making. You can't remove somebody from a public meeting. And you're not allowed in a public meeting to interrupt someone else who has the time. You can't do that either, but you do it anyway because you're a bunch of obnoxious, ignorant fools who don't <laughs> understand the issue. <laughs> don't understand that Mike Bonin is the Yeah, I can't. I'm doing that. I, I move. I move the tournament. I second the motion. Adjourn. Move the tournament. Then we kind of All right, let's adjourn. adjourn. We'll move to adjourn. Council should be abolished. I second. Abolish. Please write second. You got it. I vote to adjourn. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, Frank.